So I hope everyone can see my screen. And I'm clear, right? I'm clear? OK. All right, so welcome once again to Biblical Theology, the blossoming of God's revelation from Adam to Christ. And so I think I'm clear. I think everything is there. So let's go ahead and let us open in a word of prayer. And I pray by God's grace we can have a good class. And uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you and we are impatient. We are, we can become easily frustrated. And Father God, I just pray that you would, your spirit would be with us. You'd calm, on, calm our, our, our frustration, calm our emotions. May we be um, fixed upon you, Father God. I pray that you would give us the strength to to push forward. And I just pray for each of the students here. There's different problems. We all have problems. Many of our problems sometimes are, are, are small, Father God. So I just pray that you would give us peace and you give us guidance. I ask that the class would be clear, would be understandable, that we would learn something new, something amazing, uh, something that would transform our lives. And we could apply this to our, our own life and also to the lives of those under and around us. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things by faith. Amen. Okay, so I hope that we will have a good class tonight by God's grace. And so I don't have a scripture of encouragement because we have so many passages of scripture to go through tonight. So I hope that we will get through it. We will actually be, be doing several, we will be doing several, uh, at least two weeks here because there's just so much information. So Let's go ahead and let's work through this PowerPoint here. So just um, a reminder of our partners, Baptist Theological College, Cebu Graduate School of Theology, Eastern Versailles School of Theology, and also Converge. Uh, these are making it happen. Tonight is session eight, part one, the mode and content of special revelation in the patriarchal period, part one. And so we will actually, I have just a short PowerPoint highlighting chapter nine and the period between Noah to uh, between Noah to the patriarchs. And so we'll discuss that briefly. I'll actually bring the text up as well, just so that we have something there, but it's going to be, it's going to be short. And then we're going to focus most of the time on, uh, we'll focus most of the time on, on the patriarchs. So uh, just a quick overview of our session tonight. So we will had this brief explanation of the period between Noah and the patriarchs. And then we're also going to have breakout rooms to discuss reading chapter seven. So I believe last week you should have submitted chapter six on the patriarch uh, between Noah to the patriarchs, but we're not going to have, we're just going to have just a brief because we just don't have the time. There's just, there's just not enough time. Then we will discuss. So you'll have a brief breakout room to discuss what you've learned. Uh, with, amongst yourselves, then we'll discuss it in our class. And then we'll also have, we'll work through the notes and we'll work in the text itself. And then lastly, we'll have, if we have time, a, a breakout room review in closing in prayer. Okay, so at this point, we are into biblical theology. We're looking right now at chapter six, the mode and content of special revelation. This should not be during the patriarchal period. This should be during the, the period between this should be the period between the, the Noah and the great patriarchs. So there you go. There it is. Uh, the mode and content of special revelation between Noah and the great uh, patriarchs. So th the first major thing, just from your reading, you probably saw this. Letter A, <laughs> the prophetic deliverances of Noah. And so we are actually going to look at this passage for a minute. And I, what I want us to see first is we're going to look at his, his prophetic blessing and cursing. And we're also going to look very briefly, very briefly at his, his sin. And I want us to look at maybe similarities and differences between his sin and Adam and Eve's. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe you can see similarities. And then we're also going to look at, at some reasonings as to why Canaan was cursed versus, versus Ham, why Canaan was cursed. And then we will also look at 
and just discuss the reason behind the focus of Abraham's blessing upon the Lord rather than Shem and his house. So that was something that Voss brought up. Maybe you saw it in the reading. Maybe you didn't. It was very interesting. And so at this point, I'm going to st stop sharing and let's go to your, your, uh, the text. So if you have your Bibles tonight, please turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 9. So where are we at here? Genesis chapter 9, and I'm going to share this. Okay, I hope everyone can see this. I hope that everyone can see this here. And so what I'll do is I'll just briefly read this. I'll read verse 20 until verse 27, and then we'll discuss. So Genesis 9, 20 to 27, Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay and uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Jepheth took a garment and laid it on their shoulders and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backward. They did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what his youngest son had done. He said, cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall, be, shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem and let Canaan be his servant. So there is this uh, text. So what I first want to do is I want to come back and I want to look at the sin of, of Noah all we're doing right now is I, I don't want I don't want peripherals I don't want a lot of different things. What I want to focus on right now, very briefly, uh, is what connections do you see? What similarities do you see with Adam and Eve? Anything from Genesis chapter one twenty six until Genesis chapter three. What are let's just highlight what are things that are are similar or at least present, what, what are there? What are some similarities here? I want, I want a c connections back with Genesis chapter, uh, the end of chapter one, two, and three. Anyone? I'll begin. I'll begin. Ma Noah began to be a man of the soil. Who else was a man of the soil? Adam, Adam was. Cain. Cain. Yeah. Okay, Cain. Cain. Okay, okay, but we're not looking at Cain, Danny. Sorry, it's it's just Genesis, end of Genesis chapter one, two, and three. So, Cain is chapter four. So, that is a connection, but we're just focusing right now on Adam and Eve. So, so Adam, Adam tilled the ground, right? He labored in the ground. What other connections do you see? Vineyard. Elaborate upon that, Danny. What about the vineyard? Garden. Uh, Danny, uh, you're garden. so young. <laughs> Danny, you're so young now. <laughs> Your voice changed. Danny, go ahead. Adam was supposed to be the steward of the garden of uh, uh, of uh, God in in the in Eden. So. So we. It's not a one to one, but it's similar, right? It's not one to one, but it's similar. A vineyard is a garden. And I think in the original language, it's, it's field. In Genesis chapter 2, it's field. God planted, the Lord planted a field, and then he put Adam in it to keep it and to till it. And that field actually, we could translate garden. It's not a, a random field like we have out here. It's definitely like a garden. So we, we could, we, this, is a, this is how later, interpret, later uh, Revelation uh, describes it. So that's good. So that's the second parallel. Okay, what else do we have here? What else is parallel? What else is similar? It's not, it's not the same, but it's similar. What happened? <clears throat> nakedness. Okay, no, so great. So, so there's nakedness here, right? So there's nakedness. So this is also, this is also similar, right? So Adam and Eve were also... We're also naked, right? So there's another similarity before this. I hope you can make the connection. 
What else is similar, Henry? Okay. Uh, in Genesis, and Adam and Eve saw the tree of life, uh, tree of knowledge and evil, pleasing. The fruit is pleasing to their eyes. Okay. okay. Pleasing to their eyes. So here Noah, he drank the wine too much. It was pleasing to his eyes. <laughs> no, no, excellent. So notice here, wine is... Wine is 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 the the fruit of the vine, correct? And so, maybe the forbidden fruit was grapes, not apples. Grapes, <laughs> right? So the big takeaway is that drinking too much wine uh, leads to nakedness, right? Everyone sees that, and in the and in a similar similar way, Adam and Eve uh, ate fruit. So it's not the same, but it's similar. It's 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 outside of the the um, what God wants. So so there's debate on whether or not wine is is good or bad. Um, I I. You know, I'm from a fundamental background, so they're really against all forms of drinking. However, at the Great Supper in Isaiah, you're going to have well-aged wine there, what the text says. And also, one of the sacrifices that was pleasing to the Lord was wine. So my position is that wine is not, wine is a blessing from God, but its abuse is, is, is sin. We should not abuse it. That, that, that's my position. Now, there's different views on that. I don't want to belabor the point. The, the bottom line is that, is that the sin was not in the drinking of the wine. The sin is in, uh, this is the sin, becoming drunk. Okay? Everyone tracking with me there? The sin is not drinking wine. It, the, the sin is, is becoming drunk. Okay? So I hope what we can see here is that there's a parallel... There's a parallel in these events. Everyone sees the parallel. And the point that I'm, I'm bringing is that in Genesis, you have these, they call, Voss calls them tokens. They're principles that are going to be throughout scripture that climax in eternal um, truths, eternal realities. At the same time, uh, Satan is the same. The, 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 the power of darkness is the same. The sin nature is the same. And so what, what, what we should expect as well is we're going to have the same struggle. We're going to have the same sin. Sin is going to just, it, there's nothing new under the sun. So I hope everyone's tracking there with me that we see here the same, similar, very similar behavior, okay? And so I'm not saying that the two is, is one-to-one. I'm saying it's the same type. It's the same type of, of behavior, okay? Any questions or comments before we, we move on? Is everyone tracking there with me on that? So, so the purpose of, of this story is to show that uh, this, what happened to Adam somehow was repeated yeah. uh, by Noah. And, and Noah at this point is like every, every all men will be somehow come, be coming from Noah. Yeah, because uh, he yeah. was the only man left at the time, and uh, yeah. No, that's an excellent. Thank you for making those connections. Yeah, and 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 I, and I apologize for not being more clear. But yeah, so so if we want to be very specific, Noah is not sinless, and that's also uh, a point. And 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 yes, all all men uh, come from him, just like Adam. But then also all men, uh, even, even if they're righteous, all men will have sin. So, and this is because of the sin nature. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, La lastly, Tim, um, what do you call this one? In the narrative of redemption, this is like telling us that he's not the one because you, 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 you yeah. In in the narrative, you you would think like 
is he the is he the seed of the yeah. woman? Yeah, yeah. yeah and right, right, yeah. right away there, it, it is telling us, no, he's not the second Adam. The second Adam will be coming uh, way no. down the line. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's another really good connection ending. I really appreciate you making these these additions. Um, uh, and we're we're moving beyond boss now, right? We're we're, we're moving beyond boss, but it's good. It's it's part of fulfillment, but not the one. So Tim, yeah. Um, um, with regards to Vos presentations of the twofold covenant, uh, covenant of work and covenant of grace, I just want to know at this point when the narrative says Noah began to be a man of soil, um, does it? Is it? If this is a parallel to to work, to covenant of work in Adam, or is it? It has a connections to that. Uh, you know, covenant of work in the very beginning, or in Adam. Or... So, so the, the covenant, the covenant of work has been violated. So it's it was only made with Adam. Now we are we are all we we are all recipients of the curse because we are in Adam. Adam is our representative. So that's why in the New Testament they will describe in in Adam all die in. In Christ, all will be made alive. Not that every single literal person will be made alive, but all those that are in, by faith in Christ, in Christ's covenant, in the new covenant, in the covenant of grace, they will they will be made alive. And so here, that's going too far. The, the, the covenant that's made with Noah is the Noahic covenant, the covenant of common grace. Okay, so we, we're not saying that Noah is now, and there's there's views out there. So for example, you're you're your uh, your boy, <laughs> right? He would say that he would say that Noah's the new Adam, and 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 I would yeah, say, yeah, yeah no, I, th there's there's analogy, but it's not it's 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 not it's not the case because that goes back to the, the effects of of Adam's curse are in are in um there, there's no longer that that covenant is done. There's there's there there's there's nothing there. And in Noah's in Noah's covenant, there isn't a promise of eternal life, right? So there's no offering. So you can't you can't say it's the same or it's or it's or it's a new beyond what was instituted in in Genesis eight and nine. So yeah, so so that would be I think exegetically fair. Here, this is just it's a parallel because he, Noah is is analogous to him. He's part of. Right, so he's part of the fulfillment. Noah is already part of the fulfillment, but as Enting said, he he's not the, he's not actually the one. Is that making sense, or or maybe you want to yeah. add something else? He, he's not he is not the, the last Adam uh, at, at this point. Yeah. So so yeah. going back, and this is why I think it's hard to see that other position, Enting. I mean, not Enting, Sunny, and we're 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 on the verge of getting off topic, but but it's good because we're we're talking about this. So so we're just we're on that that precipice uh, on the edge there. But so there's never a parallel between Noah and Christ. The parallel is between Adam and Christ. And so, um, you know, th 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 that's, that's, a, that's a very significant point that can't be overlooked. Um, and the other thing too, is that the, the, in Hosea 6, 7, the, the Adamic covenant is mentioned explicitly. So yeah, so we, we don't want to say that this is a new Adamic covenant. We don't want to say it's a, um, um, yeah, we, we don't want to, th that, that covenant of works, we're only, we're only facing the, because we're in Adam now, we're only facing the, the punishment of it, if that's making sense. Now, now, I will take one step back and say that we, by virtue of creation, we are all in covenant with God. But that, again, that's beyond the scope of this class. That would be that would be for a, for a, for an upper level class, but that's not to say that we're we're not in covenant with our Creator. We, we are in covenant with the Creator because He will judge us by 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 a law, and and so uh, the, the the moral laws. But I don't. That's that's just beyond the scope. I don't want to confuse people. So yeah. So that, do you want to say anything else, or I think I think I think that's 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 sufficient. Yeah, yeah, it's sufficient. Thank you so much for clar clarifying this. This one. Thank no you so much. It's yeah, it's it's debated. I mean, there, there there are different views. There's a lot of different views. The dispensational view will be even different, and so um, mm -hmm. yeah. So the purpose here, though, is in Revelation. 
I'm just making a connection back to as, as because remember we, we had the principle of temptation. So, so just to be really explicit, what I'm trying, I should have been more clear here. I'm picking up on the principle, the principle of, of temptation, right? So that was one of the principles that's going to be going throughout all of scripture that Voss brings out. So there's four principles, right? Principle of life, principle of, te of, te of temptation, testing, the principle of probation. I think probation is number two, then, then te tem temptation, then death, okay? So here we're seeing those principles play out, okay? So th just to be really clear, okay? Um, all right, so that's all I'm gonna say there. And then coming along here, the, the big thing that we're, we're, we're focusing upon is this cursing of Canaan. So I'm not going to discuss this unless you have the question. Did people have questions as to why, as to why um, uh, Canaan was cursed, even though it was Ham's sin? Did anyone, what, were, were you following with the answer of Voss? Maybe it was insufficient. Are you tracking with why Canaan was cursed? Or is that a little fuzzy for you? Yeah, I, I think as early as, as this time, Tim, we, we can already see that the 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 the, the principle of like 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 father like son, yeah. so to speak, has no, already been good. developed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cain and Lamech, um, Abel and uh, Enoch, um, um, just as Enoch was also walking with God. Yeah. And then we see here again, it, it, it surfaced again that among the sons of uh, Ham, uh, Voss is trying to tell us that uh, the same character yeah. uh, of, of Ham was displayed by Canaan. Yeah, no, excellent description, Enting, the excellent description. And something else that we forget and even putting this all aside, so I think that that you're that you're you're very accurate there. And in Genesis five one, it says that 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 Adam fathered a son in his image, just as God fathered, in in a sense, fathered um, Adam in his own image. He created Adam in his own image. Um, putting that all aside, though, so that's that's weight. That's 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 strong. That's powerful. Putting that all aside, the the um, the 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 reality that we miss. So this would be a background uh, context that we're not we're not we're not very aware of. Is is the is this is the we could say the the corruption of Canaan, corruption of Canaan in the people. So remember, Israel Israel is Moses gave this to Israel, and Israel both. As they're entering the promised land and as they they stay in the promised land they see the corruption of canaan and canaan is incredibly corrupt they're incredibly wicked all, all the different people in canaan and so uh no one in in the jewish time would be questioning why is canaan cursed we would say we know why he's why they're cursed because they're they're corrupt people and just like father like son and so that would not be a question that we would have because we see, we see that they would see their sin being played out through the centuries. So that that's another very powerful reason. And so Voss actually brings that out. Let me see if I have that Voss quotation. We cannot look at the cursing of Canaan without considering the context of Canaan during the contemporary days of the Canaanites with Israel. We can safely assume that Canaan followed the example of his father, desiring and indulging in sensual and sexual deviancy. So that, that, that's, my, that's my statement. So then Voss's quote is, Ham was punished in one of his sons because he had sinned against his father, and he was punished in that particular son because Canaan most strongly reproduced Ham's sensual character. And so we can't read this outside of its, its context that Canaan... Um, now you would say, we don't know much about Canaan. Well, we know that his father was sexually deviant and we know that all his offspring was sexually deviant. So um, it would be counterintuitive to think that, that Canaan himself, the, per the man was not also sexually deviant. And so there, there is the reason for the cursing uh, of Canaan. And, and even, so, so putting aside all of that, 
um, putting aside all of that, there is a cursing of that family, and we and we we look at these things only in individualistic context. But this is really concerning the 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 family, the family of Ham. So is everyone tracking there with me? So we can't. We, we only see scripture in individualistic contexts. Israelite and the first century, they would only see it in family contexts. They would only see it, you, you, you know, they would not look at individualistic. Of course, the son's going to do what I want. Of course, my daughter's going to do, we're a family. They, they would not think of it in individualistic categories. Um, and so in many ways, our culture of individualistic self-autonomy really in some ways inhibits us from, from seeing how, okay, this makes perfect sense. There is no, there is no issue here. Is, is everyone tracking there with me or is that, is that a little bit confusing? Good. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Oh, so there, the other thing was, the other thing, I won't go back there, but blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. And so the focus, the focus of Abraham's blessing is not upon Shem and his house, but upon God being his, his God. So, so in this, in this, there is this idea of, there is this idea of, of faith. Does everyone see that? Because Shem is exercising faith because the Lord is his God. Okay. Blessed be the Lord, the God of, of, of Shem. So this is also suggesting a faith of Shem in the Lord, and also that the Lord has selected Shem by which he's going to continue his redemptive history, and Voss Bal brings that out. And so the blessing is focused upon the Lord. And there's no conflict here, because in blessing the Lord, the Lord will bless Shem, <laughs> right? So there's no conflict here. Sir, uh, this is this uh, this concept that you're discussing is uh, related to to the idea that was uh, mentioned about the principle of election. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Is this is this connected here in the principle of election. Okay. So 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 Voss really unpacks the principle of election in Abraham and Jacob. So this would be maybe a foreshadowing to that, and and so because. The, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are also described as the, the the Lord is described as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and 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 Jacob. Um, so, they are connected in this uh, uh, thing that you are discussing right now. When you talk about the principle of election, is this the 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 the, the, the prototype of the principle of election that voices are talking? the Petro Acts later in chapter seven. Yeah, no, no, it, I, I don't know. Did he mention that? I'm trying to think. I just don't want to put words in his mouth. I would say there's definitely a prototype here. If all we had was this passage, maybe it's inferring too much. But as but but later on, it becomes quite clear. And and God for sure chooses. It's the it's it's God who chooses the, the person by whom he's going to, to bring about his plan. And we've seen that so far. God chooses Noah. God chooses Adam. God chooses Seth. Uh, God will choose Abraham. So it's not Abraham choosing God. It's not Shem choosing God. It's not Noah choosing God. So so God always takes that 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 um, that that first step. Okay. Now I don't know if I'm trying to think. I don't know if, if Voss brings that out. So I don't want to speak presumptuously on on Voss's part. Anyone does Voss make that connection between Shem and the and the the the, um, the principle of election with Abraham? I, I didn't see that, but I don't want to misspeak. No, Jesus, um, did you that, see that connection or, or no? The focus. So, is sir, on... I, I asked because somehow the, the thing that the way you dis explain that this concept is somehow related to the idea or the principle of election. In the chapter yeah. set. Uh, yeah, no, set. no, yeah. So, so I'm ex so sometimes I'm expounding upon it. So, yeah. So I am, I am maybe adding to Voss, but 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 there is a connection. Voss does bring out that it's going to be the same, the same description. So, so let me just go back to the text, just so that we're really clear. I'm not, I'm not confusing anyone. Yeah, because you mentioned about a while ago that uh, 
the, the idea of individual uh, individualistic or something it's not you know, it's not something like uh, individual aspect but uh, if we read uh, the concept of voice in terms of principle of elections he, he's talking about the uh, universalistic approach also which is, yeah uh, okay yeah so no, no no yeah so the only comment about individualistic um, versus corporate or family Jesus is concerning the difficulty of of why it's fair that Canaan's cursed. It, what I'm trying to say is that in our context, we think very individualistically and it's not fair. And even in scripture later on, it's it, it, in Ezekiel, and I think Voss brings this out as well. In, in, in Ezekiel, uh, the, 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 the sons will not receive the punishment of the fathers, right? Every, every man's going to bear his own sin. So, so I'm not saying that there isn't individualism or individualistic responsibility, there is in scripture. What I'm trying to say though, is that I'm trying to give a, 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 a plausible and fair and biblical reason as to why it's, it's not unjust for Noah to, to curse his grandson for the sin of his father. And what I'm saying is, is that looking later in the scripture at Can the, the life of the, of, the, of the country, of all the different inhabitants of Canaan, the, the people, looking at the father, a fair biblical exegetical inference would be also that Canaan had the same behavior. And so for sure behind the scenes, perhaps Canaan was involved in some way. That's all I'm trying to say. Is that, is that making sense? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so coming down here though, the, the connection as to why this does have, this does deal with election just so everyone's tracking with me is that you have this 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 uh phrase the lord the god of shem so later it's going to be described as the god of your father abraham your father yes, isaac yes, yes, yes. your father so 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 that's the connection so even if Voss doesn't bring that out there's definitely we could talk about maybe a prototype there yeah as as well and i and i don't know where everyone Everyone falls on sovereignty versus responsibility. We'll, we'll discuss it tonight, but but I do think that I do think that 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 it's that it's here. But if all we had was this text, it's not enough. It's it, there's an echo. It's in the background, you know. For us to make any conclusion concerning election just based upon this text is is really it's 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 not. Uh, being genuine with the text, <laughs> we're, we're being we're 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 being uh, we're we're manipulating the text too much. Okay, but if if later on we see the same things, the same terminology, th th then we can make some conclusions there. Okay, all right. So at this time it's uh, six forty eight. Let's just finish this section, and then we're going to go on to the, to the next um, uh, the next section here. Okay. So last two things, I'm just going to end it here. Uh, the table of nations, the genealogy of redemption, Sh Sh Shemites are the race of redemption. Can everyone see? Okay, so uh, um, the last two points, the table of nations, the confusion of tongues. The big point is that there is a genealogy of redemption. The Shemites are the race of redemption. Through them, the rest will be blessed as we shall see. And so even though God is, is choosing specific people, it's for this, this universal, uh, universalistic plan okay so it's not that he's only choosing the shemites and and even ham and Japheth, they're messed over Sayang, they're out right no it's it's there's going to be there's going to be specific people chosen and then through that what we'll see in in the promised abraham all the nations will be blessed um the the last point that i do want to bring out is that genealogies are so important in genesis and again, it just, it seems to really support this historical accuracy, the historicity. It's just, there's so many names. It's just, it's, it's laborious. It's like, it doesn't seem to be just like a random story, you know, that's just made up. It's, it's very detailed. And so obviously there's, there's, there's a, a critical, higher critical response to that, but it just seems to be, uh, the editor Moses, he's he, he's trying to be historically accurate, and it's and, and the genealogy is important. And if the events are real, we want the genealogy to be important because this is a great a, a grand uh, redemptive 
uh, drama. It's real. It's real. So we, we want to see a clear connection from Christ back to Adam so that we can be assured that our redemption is secure. <laughs> so, um, lastly, the confusion of tongues. And I think this is just really powerful that God interferes because when man unites the, 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 uh, the unification against God, I apologize for that typo. Uh, uh, when, when man unites against God in independence, it, it's just catastrophic it's, it's, it's gross sin. It's, it's pure evil. And really behind that Satan, the, the, the kingdom of Satan is behind, is behind it. So um, that's all that we can say. There's much more that, that Voss has. We just don't have the time. Okay, so we're on. That's, that's it. That's it for, for chapter six. I'll just briefly ask any questions from chapter six you might have. On page 73, there's mention of uh, three great monotheistic religions that yeah. have sprung on the Semitic soil. But there is no mention, what are these? Do you know what are these three great monotheistic religions? Um, hold on here. Um, <coughs> so it would be, I, I would assume that it's going to be Christianity, um, Judaism, and and Islam. I, I would imagine. I would imagine that that's what he's referring to. I could be wrong on there, but Islam. I'm pretty sure. It when it, you say monotheistic, uh, what does it really imply? So monotheistic is is belief in only one God. So mon, monotheism. Great question. Monotheism means what one God. So it's the three great religions that only have one God, and so. Of course, Judaism and uh, Islam would deny that we're we're monotheistic, but we would strongly disagree. So we, it would be Christianity, Judaism, and then Islam. Yeah, I just know this because uh, it doesn't mention even the the period when when did this happen? Uh, is it uh, referring to today or during his time or earlier times? So. I'm just wondering why why he mentioned these three great monoistic religions. So yeah, I you know I know and and I think some of that is that's peripheral to our to what we're looking at. Yeah. But I but I think but I think Koyo Boboy, it's in the context because he's doing a history of Revelation, so it's in the context of Revelation, and and so from the Shemites, you're going to have the, the three great interpretations essentially of revelation because all because all three would hold to the old testament as being their their holy book their their word of god and then it's just they disagree on on some of the, the other things um okay great uh, any, anyone else anyone else want to make a comment before we, we go to, to to the breakout rooms okay so we got we got we have we have three breakout rooms and so group number one um Kuyo uh, Bobo, you can be the leader for group number one. Group number two, Enting, Pastor Enting, if you can be the, the, the leader. And then also group number three, Akea, can you, can you be the leader for group number three? So we'll do uh, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. What I want now, I'm going to be very specific, okay? I don't want you to be discussing tangentials, peripherals. What I want you to do is each person... I want you to, to give one thing that you really liked about the reading for chapter number seven, and then one thing that you disagreed with. Okay, so each person, you can, you can share the, what you liked, what you disliked, and then just have a minute to discuss. And then maybe other people will say, I agree. Okay, and then once that person's done, then go on to the next. So th that's the extent of your discussion. Okay, um, don't try to go through the chapter. It's too hard, it's too much. Each person, just, I want you to share one thing you like, one thing you dis disagree with or you dislike, and then you can have a discussion, okay? So you should be able to get through it. So it's gonna be a strict 20 minutes. So, so 7.20, we're, we're, we're gonna come back on the money, okay? So at this time, let's go ahead and open the rooms. As normal, what I want to do is I want to look at, number one, your observations. We'll use blue. Blue is more colorful. So observation. And then also your questions. And I and I and I hope that this is this discuss this reading was for me personally. I there was a lot more. 
I enjoyed this reading a lot more than the earlier ones. I thought the other ones were very hard to, to read through. And there were parts here that were laborious as well. They, they were hard to read through. But I felt like I received a lot more substance. Uh, it was more profound, some of those things. Maybe you can disagree with that. I don't know. Maybe you'll agree with that. So let's go ahead. Group number, we'll do group number one first. So I think Kuya Boboy is group number one. What are your, what are your observations that you made, the significances? What were things you liked? Maybe something you disliked? Go ahead, Kuya Boboy. Attorney Boboy. Boboy. Henry pointed out that uh, statement on page 80, when Israel occupied the land that they began to worship, but their places as the Canaanites had long worshiped there, including Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their own list of deities, gradual learning to fill the home uh, in Canaan, they soon came to fill their sacred places belong to them, and that therefore the gods worship in them must be Hebrew, not Canaanites. He was uh, particularly questioning why, I mean, actually asking, this observation, this observation, why was this uh, recorded that uh, uh, Abraham was considered a Canaanite uh, uh, deity, deity? Okay. Uh, so that's a, that's a question. That's a question. Yeah, yeah. So I, I explained that this was how Bose uh, described the criticism of Abraham being a mythical figure and not a historical figure. Yeah. The second uh, discussion was about, although I was the one who brought it out, is on page 81. Okay. We are told that Abraham married his half-sister and such action was not customary among Israel in later times. So yeah. we asked the question, when did this started na an Israeli was allowed to marry a half-sister? If yeah. this was supposed to marry at the time. So that was a question. That was a question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's 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 so so my my own observation, although we were not able to discuss this because of the lack of time, was about the form and contents of the revelations to the patriarch because it seems there were so many forms and especially the locations. One as the altar, the other uh, the other uh, uh, mentioned by boss was the time usually bucket palaging night time yeah yeah that was my own that was my own observation yeah so it's it's um so this was more a question but then here you're looking at the revelation comes at night yeah and that's the reality so so that's that's very interesting right um and there's also in connection with this, there's this idea of fear and dread, right? When it happens, there's fear yeah. and dread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, anything else? Or, or that was essentially it? Was that essential, essentially everything? Yeah, because I said we, 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 we run out of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, no, so, yeah, so, so, and then this was like a, um, uh, an idealist, uh israelite i think like the perfect israelite type i think those were three views maybe i could be mistaken was that also one where it was like the perfect israel or the the perfect something like that so there was like just it was just pure myth yeah that's it canaanite, canaanite origin and then i think there was like some form of like like an idealist like the, the perfect israel like patriarch but it was just this it's it's not real. This this it's is not real. real either. It's not real. It's just cr created. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no. So I I think you're explaining it was really good, and I would just say that this is really this is the liberal. I mean, this is they don't want to accept the historical reality. They they want to they want to cause doubt. So the purpose for this is to the the purpose behind this is this is to cause doubt. Now, of course, they would say that's good because, you know, they're trying to be critical. They're trying to be scientific, historical. But who else calls doubt? <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
so I think there is something to be said here that this is this is coming from this is coming from Satan. Because 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 now I'm just gonna meet you, Boba, because there's some feedback. Uh, but I'm not if you want to say something, you can. So but what what I what I'm trying to say here is that you know maybe I get thrown out of, of a school in the US for saying that. But the end of the day, Jesus, Paul. The New Testament writers, they assumed a historical Adam, a historical Abraham. They were real people. They, they took the accounts as real, historical, and accurate. They, they viewed the scripture as being, in the words of Paul, God breathed, literally the word of God. And so you only have it in the modern era where they're bringing in all this doubt, they're questioning. And, and, I, and I do think, I, 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 want, I want to say this strongly, I think it's coming from him. You know, maybe that's a strong statement. It will not be accepted in academia. Maybe they will shoot me. <laughs> but nonetheless, I, I think there's truth to that. So, you know, Voss is really dealing with that. He's, he's dealing with those type of, of readings. And it was so interesting how I think he said, like, there's still no evidence for the one, the Canaanite. It's a very hard read. But they, they're committed to it. They're committed to trying to discredit the word of God. Um, good. Um, okay. No, and, and the... the, the the, the half-sister, I think it's because Abraham is still coming from the Shem family, and it's not, there's not really, it's, it's still proto-Israelite. It's before Israel. And, um, but the one thing that's, that's significant here, Koyobobo, Diba, notice how that the, the line of Seth, the line of Seth and the line of Seth and Cain, they mix, diba, and that's wrong. Here, uh, the line of Shem, Abraham goes back to find Sarah. There's not a mixing. It's still within the same family. And then you see as well in Israel, there's a warning uh, not to not to intermarry. Correct? Uh, can, can we make a uh, uh, clarification on that instruction not to intermarry? Yeah. You can also agree that while there was instructions not to intermarry, there was no specific instructions that you can marry your relatives. Well, no, you, you there was the incest. You were not allowed to commit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so except except so, except the incest, except the incest. Yeah. Yeah. So so you could marry a distant relative, like the kinsman redeemer. You, you, that's actually that's actually biblical because you're maintaining you you would actually marry distant relatives because you're keeping yeah. the promise of God. So that's fine. But but I think the principle of intermarriage and the purpose for not intermarriage is not just because of culture, it's not because of race, it's because of it's because of 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 setting apart and holiness, or we could say holiness. Which is related to the New, uh, New Testament of do not be yoked with unbelievers, right? No, no, this is the Different. foundation for, this is the foundation. So, no, this is, no, this is really good. So, Kuri <laughs> boy, this is a biblical theology. So, a biblical theology of, of marriage this is the foundation. So you can, you can start to imagine to see when we talk about biblical theology of different topics, this is what we mean by biblical theology. You're unfolding the framework. And so here, these are the prototypes. These are, this is the foundation by which we build the structure and it comes to its climax in the New Testament of do not be yoked with unbelievers for what part does light have with darkness? Yeah. <laughs> so it's not an issue of race. It's not an issue of culture. It's an issue of light and darkness. It's, it's, an issue, it's an issue of sin. So the big takeaway here is that you can marry, we should want to marry a believer, a Christian. We're commanded to because we are, we are married to Christ. <laughs> we are in union with Christ. So I hope that I, I kind of went along the way here. I hope that you were really starting to see this is how biblical theology plays out. And so the big takeaway here, brothers and sisters, is that 
if you're preaching a sermon, you can preach an expository, but some people like to preach more topical. So I would say you can preach topical, but it should not be topical where you're just going around picking random parts of the scripture. Preach your topic, biblical theological. <laughs> biblical theological. So you can pick your topic on prayer, but don't go to all these different random passages. It's so confusing. Do a biblical theological stu uh, study in prayer, a biblical theological study in love. And so now you're working from the biblical theological framework, how that topic, how, how God is either transforming it or how it's being brought to its climax in Christ in the church. So I, I, I hope this is, what, this is uh, giving you a foretaste of the beauty of biblical theology and, and um, I'm using that in the technical sense. Great, okay, group number two. I'm going a little bit long here. Group number two, what do you have for me? Just okay, asking. Uh, take it away, Kaya. Okay, yeah, pa. okay. Ay, tayo na, ano, okay po. Um, bali yung, uh, for our group, Pastor Tim, it's in page 94. This is from okay. Tito Danny. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the ob uh, he agreed with the objective action of God, um, interlinked with the three great promises. So he agreed with this. And then Tito Danny has nothing to disagree with. <laughs> So what are those three and, promises? What, hold on. What are oh, those three promises? First, the chosen family would be made into a great nation. Okay. Secondly, the land of Canaan would be their possession. Thirdly, okay. that there were to become a blessing for all people. And then uh, for Jomar, uh, we weren't able to discuss what he agreed with, but he disagrees with uh, what's written in page 93. Go ahead. Uh, regarding Israel in its racial capacity will again in the future be visited by the saving grace of God. So his argument here is more emphasized on the use of the word saving grace of God. Okay, okay. So, uh, and then for Cyrus, he agrees with, with the uh, three principles discussed, the principle of election, the gifts and the super supernaturalism and then for cyrus he was okay. still discussing uh regarding the disagree what he is disagreeing with but we were cut off already okay can you just just give me some, so maybe the biggest the biggest highlight for your group what would you say was the biggest what would you say this is the biggest highlight for the for your group what would you say was the biggest thing that you agreed on or was most significant for your group um well personally actually uh pastor uh pastor tim i i agreed personally i would agree mostly on what cyrus was explaining but it's okay. more focused on um not only the the three principles the election the gifts and supernaturalism it with concern with the patriarchs yeah. but most essentially with what he this said about jacob Jacob's struggle, and uh, I, I find it uh, very, very amazing that uh, the, his illustration of the persistency of faith and prayer. Yeah. So there, and then, and then that's it. Um, I think with uh, with uh, Sir Jomar, he just wants. I, I think because I told him that we actually did not. I, I do not agree with him with the. Uh, saving grace of god he is just uh, actually particular with uh with the term or i mean the words used and uh tito danny and i were explaining to him that um i think we think that Voss is using such terms or is a bit deeper in his language because um english is not his forte something like that yeah yeah so that's page let me think about so he, so Voss was saying that 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 God will again visit Israel with with um, um, with salvific grace. He 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 said that, correct? Yes, yes, saving grace okay. of God. Yeah, is so, the term. yeah. So there is a passage of scripture that I'll mention here. We can, if we have time, or maybe Sunday night, we'll discuss this Sunday night. Romans eleven, uh, twenty six to twenty seven. That could be what. Voss is referring to, and you said that was page 94, page 94 of Voss? 
It's in page 93. 93, okay. So maybe we'll have a discussion on that on that this this Sunday night, okay? Great, great comments, great observations. I really like, I like this. I like, I like what you're saying here. I think, I think maybe Koya Danny said that. I like that as well. And the persistency of prayer. We see that throughout scripture. And and what we could say here is that for this here, that that Jacob, Jacob really believes. Oh, Pastor Tim, I would like to add something uh, because uh, I wasn't able to share this with our group. But uh, what I agree also is the saying, grace overcoming human sin and transforming human nature is the keynote of the revelation here. So, Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, this is uh, with regards to Jacob. Grace overcoming human sin and transforming human nature is the keynote of the revelation here. So I really like that uh, what Voss said here because actually I personally I was having I was struggling with this reading and I cannot I was telling them that I cannot get it. What is the importance of this reading? And now after everything that I've been going through, I realize that everything is really by grace and and that that it, you know. Even if, no matter how much evil people are, mm. I have no right to judge them. That only God has the right. And even no matter how evil people are, if God will save them, God will save them. So yeah. I, I should not judge someone just because he's, he or she is doing something evil or something wrong. And I should just, you know, God elects and I, my role is just to share the gospel to them. Yeah, that's, no, that's... And I think that's, God doesn't tolerate, God is very long suffering in his, in, in, in his toleration of people. At the same time, he, does, he never excuses or ignores sin. And I like the part where you're saying overcoming and transforming. So his grace will overcome our sin, but he transforms us. He doesn't allow, he doesn't, he doesn't enable bad behavior. <laughs> Uh, and we see that over and over again, right? So he was very gracious in Genesis four to nine, uh, but it climaxed. It, 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 it climaxed in his judgment. So um, I like what you're saying that he is the judge and we are not. Our job is to is to have faith. Our job is to speak the truth. But at the end of the day, we are not to, we're not to be judged. That's really good. Great. Um, uh, Enting, Pastor Enting, what what does your group have for us here? Yes, Dean. Just two things. Uh, first is I, I'd like I'd like to just comment that the argument of the uh, th th this is just this is just a sidebar thing. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the argument of this of the scholars from our vantage point, it's it's almost laughable. You yeah. can sense that they're doing everything just to discredit the scripture. Um, in, in, in the process, it's it's really illogical. I just want to comment on that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 so it's so. What's the word? It's like grasping for straws. It becomes right. so implausible what they're arguing for. And it's yeah. No, I, I, that's a great observation. That's a great observation. Looking at looking at just no. It's it's good. Good. Okay. What else do you have? That's it's 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 a classic example of wanting to be wise but end up to be yeah really looking foolish. Um, in the yeah. process, but anyway, <laughs> I like I like how Voss have, you know, argued that that historicity should be def defended because, uh, in his own words, he said, if there be no historicity historicity before that, then the process of redemption loses itself in a prehistoric mist at its beginning. So he was arguing there that that if there was no historical Abraham, then the historical existence of Jesus would would be negligible. So, yeah. what what was at stake is our redemption. Yeah. So, if there was no re, um, no historical Ab Abraham, then it goes without saying. So, Jesus is the 
offspring of Abraham to whom mm. in whom all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So yeah. if there was no Abraham, then then our faith as Christ, as Christians would would really be nothing at all. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I, we like that. Um, Voss really was on or was spot on on how important uh, that uh, Abraham and the patriarchs are historical figures. And, yeah. and they are, but yep. No, that's that's really good because because at the end of the day, if if they're not real, there's nothing left to discuss except we could say we could have some moralistic truths. Maybe they did a good thing, maybe they did a bad thing, don't be like them. That's it. And then what 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 scholars will say is, is I'm thinking of the liberal ones, even in modern day, is it's just this is the old testament is just it's like Israel's musings with trying to, to grapple with their past, their, their beginning, and then also with trying to reach out to God. But if it's only coming from them, it, it, it's just musings of an ancient Near Eastern pre-scientific people group that has no, you know, there's no more promise. There's no more, it's, it's, it, it's completely lost. You cannot have it. It's, you can't have, you, you, you know, it, it's really powerful on um, what you're saying. Um, it's kind of crazy before the liberals. So like just to really set the table for where our, our evangelicalism is going. And I'm, I see this in Manila. I see this in Manila at some of the institutions. So back in like Voss's day, you had the liberals. It's all myth. It's all just from man. There's nothing supernatural. It's, it's, just, it's just all coming from man. And then the conservatives know it's supernatural. It's real. In today's culture now in the U.S., what they're saying is the liberals are right across the board. It's 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 all myth. It's just their culture, but we can still believe in God. So so that's that's the corruption of of, of Satan because now they're just trying to say, well, they're all right there, but we can still have the Bible. And and I think what you're saying, Enting, and what Voss is saying is no, you can't. You can't. You, you can't. You, it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. But what I'm trying to say is that this is the direction that that Christianity is going, it's in America now, and it's coming here, and, and it, it, you'll start to see it more and more inconsistent. Um, okay, anyone else want to add really quick? We're going to go into the, into the PowerPoint, and we're going to do some discussion here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get good. Um, anyone want to add anything before I, we, we go yeah. to the PowerPoint? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We'll go. There's a point uh, raised by Boss on page 109. It's about the moral aspect of election. Yeah. Okay, that, we'll get there. Is that, we'll, we'll, is that a criticism yeah. or uh, just a statement of both? He's not, he's not sure whether he is talking of the criticism or it's just his uh, way of explaining why Sarah was chosen over Hagar and why is it over Hagar? Something like that. It. With respect to Jacob and Esau, the moral aspect is eliminated because it was decided even before the two were born. As I, that's why I opened up during our uh, breakout session a while ago with our group with uh, Attorney Boboy about the, uh, the principle of election. The, the way I look at uh, Voss' concept of the principle of election is somehow the one we are talking about in page 93 is about the saving grace. Yeah. So somehow for me, uh, the, the principle of election is totally uh, uh, what Voss is trying to, to, say, to say here is about that's what Kia mentioned a while ago about the this uh, saving grace that uh, the Bible also also trying to emphasize. So that, that's the, the way I look at it, the principle of election. Yeah. So so Voss will say it's monergistic. I think the word that Voss uses, mon if you can remember that, it's monergistic. We will get there. Okay. So I promise. Let's have this discussion once we get there in the PowerPoint. Um, it's very important for us for us to have that discussion. Let's go to the PowerPoint now, and then we will get there for sure, okay? We, we, we will get there. Um, okay, let's go ahead and let's, let me just stop sharing this, and then we'll get into the PowerPoint here. Okay, so we're, we're now into, we're still in part A of the history of Revelation, the mode and content of special revelation in the Old Testament, but now we're on to five, and this is during the patriarchal period, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do first is we will talk about the historicity of, of the patriarchs. I, I'll have some quotations from Voss. And, and then we're also going to look at the mode 
We will look at the mode of revelation during the patriarch. So we'll, that was the assignment for the scripture reading. I hope that that was making sense for you. I hope that you're making connections. We will also work through some fundamental passages of scripture to really highlight this mode um, and some of the content too. And then the third point is going to be the content of the revelation. So we'll be working through all these. And actually this is going to be two weeks. So we might not get to all of the, the, the points in the second half of, of this chapter. We'll finish it next week. So I just want to go slow and we're just going to slowly work our way through. And my goal is really for us to have understanding. I do, no one really talked about the angel of the Lord. So I was actually kind of surprised that there was no discussion on the angel of the Lord. For me, that was really uh, revolutionary in listening to boss. So um, we'll also be talking about the angel of the Lord. Okay. So, Historicity of the, of the patriarchs. What Pastor Enting said is really true. It's not a small issue. It is a very important issue. And let me see, let me, let me get a quote out here for, for, from Voss. In answer to these constructions, we must first of all emphasize, we must first of all emphasize that the historicity of the patriarchs can never be to us a, a matter of small importance. The religion of the OT being a factual religion, it is untrue that these figures retain the same usefulness through the lessons that can be drawn from their stories as actual history would possess. This prejudges the answer to the fundamental questions. What religion is for? If on the Pelagian principle, so when we talk about Pelagian, that's actually a man from the early, uh, early church. And, and his view is that Essentially, man is basically good. We're not, he, had a, he had a very positive understanding of human nature. Uh, he believed that, um, I'm going to mess this up, um, but I'm pretty sure it's been a while. But Pelagius believed that man could reach out to God. Man, uh, Pelagius believed that, he, that he, man was good enough and had the ability to reach out to God. And essentially, he reduced much of scripture to just this moral we just need to encourage people to do what's right and they're going to be able to perform it was very self-autonomous um, people are good they can they can do what's right on their own power without the spirit uh, none of us that's heretical none of us should have that perspective uh, many the debate of calvinism and arminianism is actually semi-pelagian and semi-pelagian and then um, what they would call they would call um, like like a Calvinistic perspective. That is that that every part of man's uh, being, both outward and internal, action, word, and thought, is affected and corrupt. A semi-Pelagian says that's the case, but um, uh, God enables every man to be able to think clearly, and so that he can choose God. Um, but he does that for everyone. So I don't want to get into all those discussions that can be for a systematic theology class, or if we're dealing in biblical theology in the New Testament. For our purposes today, I'm just quoting for Voss. Um, he's describing this Pelagian principle. And so when he uses the word Pelagian principle, essentially what he's saying is, it's just moral teaching. It's just uh, do this and live. Be a good person. It's, it's, it's along those lines. And so he says, all of scripture is just reduced to this Pelagian principle. It serves no other purpose than to teach religious and moral lessons from example. So literally, it's just an issue of Abraham had faith. You need to have faith. Abraham obeyed God. You need to obey God. And that's, um, that's the extent. If Abraham was not a real person, that's all you could teach from that, from that, from that example. And actually, there's not that much weight to that because Abraham's not even real. So you know, there, it really becomes very difficult to give a motivation, okay? It really becomes a very difficult to give a strong motivation. He says here further, the historicity is no longer of material importance. We can learn the same lessons from legendary or mythical figures. But if according to the Bible, they are, they are real, real actors in the drama of redemption, the actual beginning of the people of God, the first embodiment of objective religion, if Abraham was the father of the faithful, the nucleus of the church, then the denial of this historicity makes them useful, uh, makes them useless from our point of view. The whole matter, the whole matter depends 
on how we conceive of man's need as a sinner. So this is not a small issue. If we hold to a biblical theological framework, we have to accept them as real. And this is the big takeaway. Um, so bringing in, in, in the U.S. context, and I'm sharing this because this will be, this will be coming to Takloban soon. You have a lot of, Takloban is very progressive. You, you have 21st century technology. Lazada is coming here every day. Lazada is coming to my house now. So, so, you know, these things are on our doorstep. And in the U.S. church, people are denying the historicity of Genesis 1 to 11. So they would deny the historicity of Adam, of Eve, of Seth, of Abel, of Cain, of Noah, of Lamech. Those are, that's all myth, okay? The next step in that is denying the, the, the historicity of the patriarchs. And so in academia, in Europe, in the U.S., you cannot go to a, a secular accredited institution and do a PhD program and accept or publicly take the position that, a, that Abraham was a real person. You could not. You could not publicly. You will be removed from the program. Um, that is a fact. Uh, so that, that is coming to the Philippines. It's, it's, it's in Manila. It's in the liberal institutions in Manila, it will be coming to Tacloban if it's not here in, in some of the more progressives. And so this issue is very important for our church. Um, we can never give up on the historicity of these individuals. This is the foundation of our faith. The patriarchs teach us so much more than simple religious and moral lessons. And so this is for us, we all fall into this trap. We just fall into this looking for the moral lesson the simple moral lesson in the lives of the patriarchs. And what I'm trying to get us to see here is we need to move beyond that into this grand redemptive story. The history of revelation is connected and inseparable to the history of redemption. And so that doesn't mean that there are, if you notice here in the content, we look at both the history of redemption and also the examples, right? So, so Jacob, the principle of election, God chooses us, okay? But then the persistent faith, the call to, to live by faith, to trust in the promise of God, it's both and. I hope everyone sees that. It's both and. It's, um, many times people will say it's an either or. They give it an either or. It's like, no, it's a both and. It's, it's yes and yes. And so um, this is very significant for us. Um, and it begins with the fact of accepting them as real. And, and, and when you see someone who is denying that, or someone in your church, it cannot be a situation where you just say, okay, we disagree. It's, this is not a agree to disagree type thing. Okay, this, this issue here would not be agree to disagree in our churches. Okay, that's not to say that we don't work through the issues with incredible long suffering and patience. I'm not saying in any way to kick people to the curb. What I am trying to say is that these issues are very fundamental to our to, to, to our faith and to our church. And so uh, um, this would not be a disagreement over baptism or a disagreement over, over songs or dress. This is a fundamental issue. And, and as leaders in churches, we need to be in agreement and we need to bring our flock along. So I just really want to emphasize this because this is going to be happening, maybe not now in Takloban, but soon. It will happen. Um, the people of God, the embodiment of objective religion, the nucleus of the church are in Genesis. So if we see that in Genesis, in very principial, fundamental form, um, what type of application, what type of, of impact does that have for us? Okay, now, um, what we're going to do now is I have laid out before we go into all of the notes, okay, you should have done the reading, so you should be very familiar. What I've done on the right is I've given all the major topics in this chapter. So you have revelation mode and content, you have election, you have objectivity of gifts, supernatural activity and fulfillment, subjective transformed life, the name of the Lord, so um, uh, El Shaddai, uh, faith, ethical elements, and sacrifice. So, so those are most of the, those are most of the, the topics, okay? Um, 
what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at now four different passages of scripture. Okay, four different passages of scripture. And we're going to look at these concepts in the passages of scripture because Voss lays it out. You should have read it. You should have picked up on it. And so we're going to highlight and we're going to really build a strong case. I want you to be convinced that what Voss is saying is in the text. And so um, now we might not get to all of these tonight, but, but we're going to work through these passages and then we're going to do the notes. Okay. And so there'll be more passages as we go. But let's go now to your to, to, to your to, to the to the scripture because I want to work through these things. I want you to see, I want you to see these things. There will be some parallels. If you took the Bible's big story last semester, there will be some parallels because we're dealing with the same the, the same topic. Uh, there will be different things. So let's go ahead now. I'm going to uh, share my okay. I'm going to go ahead and read Genesis 12. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Genesis chapter 12, verses one to three. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred to, and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, so... Uh, Coming back here, looking at some big, I'm just going to highlight some big things. What does Voss say about, what does he say about the difference between being outside the promised land and being in the promised land? What does Voss talk, what does Voss talk about with, with that as far as in connection with Revelation? Does anyone remember uh, does he not say that when he's, when the, 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 the promised land is like this, this uh, special place, we've seen the special place of God before, right? And so outside the promised land, God is just speaking. And then in the promised land, it, the, the revelation becomes more frequent. It's happening now in a vision. It's at night. And there seems to be a lot more clarity, a lot more clarity and a lot more private. It's private and secret, I think is the words that, that Voss uses. Okay, so we're not there yet. Ad, uh, uh, Abraham is not yet in the promised land. And so, and so Voss is picking up on that. And so the Lord, the Lord speaks to Abraham. So this is, this is the, this will, we would say that this is the, we could say this is the, the, the calling and commissioning of Abraham. So this is, this is much more specific, right? So Noah, Adam was given a task, right? Adam was given a task. There was probation. There was tempting and testing. And if he, if, if he succeeded, he would have been given eternal life. He didn't. And so he was judged. Noah was given a task, right? And then there was a probation period. He obeyed. And then he was rewarded, correct? Everyone tracking there with me? So we have we have in, 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 with, 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 the, with the men, we have Adam, we have Noah, and now we're going to have Abraham. And if you notice here, this and moving further is going to be redemption. God is going to be working through redemption to bring about this. Okay. Adam fails. Noah is obedient. Right? And so now we're, what is, what is Abraham going to do? Now, for sure, Abraham is not perfect. He sins, right? He doubts. Okay? So, um, but concerning the command of the Lord, is Abraham faithful? Look at, look at the commands here. The commands are, Go from a country, from your kindred, from your kindred, from your father's house to a land. The object is the land that I will show you. So this right here, this is the command. Right? And then we have here, this is the promise. This is, this is the, the action. 
But if we're looking over here, we're tracing the, the interpreting the word pattern. This is the this is the command right here, and then this is the promise. So everyone's tracking with me. There is multiple promises. Right, so there's there's one, two, three, four, five, right? And it climaxes, it climaxes in this promise. Right? These are all promises. It climaxes in this promise right here. This is a little bit beyond Voss at this point. Uh, well, before this, so we'll go back to Voss. Where is the, where is, what, what principles do we see from Genesis that are now coming into here? What principles do you see? It's faith. Okay, no, so that's good, but let's hold off, let's hold off, uh, uh, Henry, the, 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 the four principles from Voss, there were four principles from Genesis. Um, uh, there was, I won't share with them, so we need to look back at those principles, those four principles, what principles do you see here, or implied, whether real or implied? So Henry mentions faith, for sure there is, there is a faith component, so I don't want, Henry, I don't want to I don't want to say that there isn't a faith. So I'm just going to put this along the side here because I, I'm focusing right now on, I'm focusing right now on um, uh, the content from our, from our, from our course. What are those, what are those principles that Voss says are throughout scripture? Uh, and team. Yeah. Well, one is uh, of course the probation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. He would have to obey. So, so does everyone see the probation here? There is, there is a massive gap. There is, the, there is a time gap here, right? He's just not going to get the big nation. He's just not going to have the great name, right? Correct? The, 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 gap, is, the gap is going from his land into the promised land. The land that he will show him. So there's his probation. Um, what else did you want to add? Did someone else want to add? It's the principle of election. Okay. <laughs> no, so it's there. It's there because of because it's it's there in um, election is here. And so Henry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. What's another word that we can use for election? What's another word? English word. Predestined. Okay, predestined, but that's your Christianese already. I'm thinking about a, a chosen, basic chosen. 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 Cho yes, chosen, chosen, yeah. Choo uh, let's do this. Uh, to, to choose. So when we elect a president, we are choosing a president, okay? So a president cannot choose himself to become the president, right? Someone else has to choose him. <laughs> Someone else has to elect him. In every case, when you use the word elect, it's choose. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we have this here. The Lord, the Lord is the actor. The Lord is the actor here, and he's the one that has reached out to Abra Abram and chosen him for this task. So you it's there. God chooses, he calls, he commissions him. To a task and then in if he's obedient to the task he receives the promise now uh what other what other what other um aspects are here uh principles M maybe not explicit life. but implicit life okay anything how do you, how can you say life where do you see life uh the blessing ah that, that god promised <laughs> abram so we'll also talk about blessedness so if this is something to think about, if we, we can say life or we can say if someone is blessed, if you talk about someone being blessed, it, it, it's, it's like a synonymous with life. 
and even for God, if, if, if God's favor, if God's blessing is upon us, you would not in any way say, well, you know, he's dying, he's dead, all those different things. So, so, so in many ways, these are, these are interchangeable. And actually, Voss will talk about that we, we're, we're going into that higher state we could say life, he says blessedness, the higher level of blessedness. The last, if, we, if we are receiving the blessedness of, of, we need to be thinking about blessedness going hand in hand with life. So, so Enting, I'm going to put you on the spot. Looking in the Mosaic law, where do we see this play out, these words um, in the Mosaic law? I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, I apologize. The, the principle of life. Tim? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like Deuteronomy 28, uh, curse for disobedience and <laughs> and blessing for obedience. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's like uh, Deuteronomy, I think it's 20, 29 and 30, the 29, blessing 30, and the yeah. cursings. The blessing and the and the cursings, it's, it's uh, b- choose blessing uh, for obedience, cursing for disobedience. And so then, then the, Moses will just say, choose life. <laughs> Choose life. So, so life and death go hand in hand. These are interchangeable. Throughout the Mosaic Law, you're going to see. So, so when, when, uh, when you see this idea of this concept of life, it's, it's always connected with being blessed. And so here we don't have the word life, but we have the word bless. Let's highlight it here. Bless. Blessing. Bless. Bless. So there's a lot of bless. There's a lot of blessings here. Okay. Great. Um, now, what else do we see? What else do we see coming down here? I'm thinking now, I'm thinking now in big categories of, of, of Genesis and the, his, the, the history of redemption. Um, now, looking up here, how we're making a connection with life and blessedness and, and cursing and death, where can we see the promise? Where can we see the promise, um, or we could say the proto-evangelium? Where do you see that? All the earth shall be blessed. Yeah, so remember, remember. so we have here in Adam, in, uh, Adam and Eve... They brought curse and death, right? But there was a promise. There was a promise of undoing the curse of death, right? Everyone tracking there with me? So let me just move this over. So if I'm going to make a big timeline here, I want to make a big timeline here. This is time. The, the next, the further clarification to Genesis 3.14 and 50, I believe it's 3.14, right? 3.14 is the proto, even someone correct me, double check me on that. Is it 3.14? The, 3.15. The, 3.15, okay, I, 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 thank you. The next clarification in time and space is with this Abrahamic blessing. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So whereas Abraham brought the curse and death, now, I'm not, sorry, Adam. Adam brought the curse and death. Now in Abraham's seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. According to Paul, what does Paul say concerning this reference? Who does Paul make the connection to? Someone, Someone give it. Okay, uh, so Sonny, you're you're on deck now. You've you've taken the baton. So, passage, please. The strongest passage in the scripture. Galatians three. 14. I forget. Fourteen. Some, fourteen. Galatians three. Galatians three fourteen. Ah, uh, yeah, Galatians three fourteen. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so there's there's several passages here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go further down before Galatians three fourteen. That's very explicit. But here, um, Galatians three seven. Know then that it is those of faith who are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. So the gospel was preached beforehand. 
saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. Along, uh, so then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So, so uh, and then it's repeated as well in Galatians, uh, uh, Galatians 4, uh, 3, was it 314? Is that what you said? 3? Emptying? Was it yes, three fourteen. It's yeah, very explicit. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah. So then, three fourteen says, um, "So that in Christ Jesus, Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, <laughs> might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit th through faith." So we, we want to say it's Galatians three, three, seven, and fourteen. What it's saying, what it's reflecting back upon this Abrahamic promise. And the way Paul describes it, it's the gospel. It's the gospel and it's the fulfillment. Is everyone tracking there with me? So what I'm trying to get at is that, is that the, I hope we're seeing the big picture. Maybe we're going a little bit more than what Voss is talking about. Um, but what I want us to see here is that, is that in the history of Revelation, the, this is why the covenant of grace is so critical that, that Voss will talk about. Because it, because it begins here. It begins here uh, in, in the, in the, in the Proto-Evangelium. And then it's further expounded upon. It's further explained. It's, it's both fulfilled. And then also there's a promise with Abraham. This is how God does it. And then it's brought to its climax in Christ. Is everyone tracking? Ask a question. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, does, does, does anyone have a question or, or you want to expand or you want a clarification here? Good. Okay. So what I want us to see here is we have... We have, um, so coming back to, to, to this revelation mode and content, the mode and content is, the mode is similar. God's speaking, right? It's, 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 he's speaking direct, okay? Direct speech to Abram. But the content is now more information concerning redemption, right? Does everyone see that? The revelation, the revelation is further expounding upon redemption, okay? And we see election. We see election explicit in God selecting and calling Abraham. And we see, so we, we talk about the objectivity of the gifts. Um, let's go back to the, let's go back to the text. Um, objectivity of the gifts, right? So uh, someone brought this out. I think Kaya brought it, their group brought it out before. Objectivity, a great nation. The name will be great. And all the earth, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. If this is all myth, if this is all fake, <laughs> what are we doing here, right? So it's the, the gifts are objective. If death and, 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 and the curse was real in the garden, this is real and objective here, okay? Uh, any other comments or questions? Is everyone tracking there with me here? So I, I hope that we see, we're, we're going a little bit further than Voss, but this is what Voss is referring to here. Uh, we're seeing those connections of election. We're seeing the, 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 um, the mode and content of Revelation, how it's being brought to that next, to that next place, the next step. Okay, let's go to the next passage of scripture here. There's going to be, uh, this will, this will help us. I think this will become with mode and content. This will become even more clear here now. So let me just go ahead and read and let's talk through this. So if you have your scripture reading reflection report, you can also interact after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. So now it seems to be more. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Abraham said, Abram said, O oh Lord, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. 
and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. So again, uh, well, we'll come back. Think about objectivity of the gift. So Abraham's like, okay, more, more figurative. My, just, just someone in my household, right? Maybe someone in my household can be my heir. And, you know, maybe this can be synergistic. Maybe we can work together, God. We can work together to, to save, to bring about your, maybe, God, maybe you and I can work together to bring about your promise, right? So let's, let's, let's think about that. We'll come back. We'll come back here. Um, uh, and he brought him outside and said, look toward the heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. This is natural revelation here. <laughs> He's going to natural revelation to confirm <laughs> the special revelation uh, and the promise. He said, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give this land to possess to you. But he said, O Lord, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said, bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove and a pigeon. And he brought those, he cut them in half and laid them over it against the other, but he did not cut the birds in half. And when the birds of prey came down to the carcass, Abram drove them away. And as the sun was going down, so again, it's maybe this is helpful. And a deep sleep fell upon Abram and behold, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in the land that is not theirs and will be servants there. They will be afflicted for 400 years. I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve. And afterward, they will come out with great possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age and they shall come back here in the fourth generation. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And when the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking pot a smoking fire pot and flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying to your offspring, I give this land from the river Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Kadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Gershites, and the Jebusites. So again, we can't go through everything here, but just highlight things. From here on out, most of the time, especially throughout all the Old Testament, the Lord is going to speak in this mode, or we could say in this, through this uh, means. Uh, visions, dreams, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Okay. And notice the content though. Commands not to be afraid. There's, there's commands. Uh, commands mixed with promise. Now we're looking at content. So this is the content of revelation and, and mode. So what I, I hope that we're going to start to see is that the mode is not as clear. It's in these visions. And we're going to be comparing what I want us to see here. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to preempt you here. Looking, looking at the, the OT compared to the, the new T, what is the mode? and content I, I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of a foretaste where should our focus be i want us to be thinking about this this is this is becoming very significant because this will have practical application in our churches of of where should the content we should be looking for revelation what type of mode should we be looking for? Okay, is everyone tracking there with me? I'm giving you a little, I'm, I'm giving you a little, I'm foreshadowing, um, okay? So then Ab Abraham here, so, so this is, so now we're, we're combining several different things and then we're just gonna highlight later, okay? So here, 
Abraham, this is really, Abraham is, 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 is being right here uh, synergistic. When we talk about synergistic, we're talking about um, uh, working with God to get the promise. So Abraham is suggesting, Abraham is suggesting, why not, let's just do Eleazar. Brothers and sisters, when we start thinking that God's promises and God's plan is, can only be fulfilled through us, we, we, are, we are the one that God must have. He cannot fulfill his work unless us. It, it's only me. If, if you ever hear this coming from someone, you should you should be very you should be <laughs> you should be concerned the the lord look at this here the lord look this is a command look to the heaven no, number the stars what 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 he's doing here is he's calling upon uh, God's promise is founded upon his created work. Do you see that? <laughs> we miss this because we're, we're so scientific now. We don't we don't value that God created everything by the word of his mouth. If God can make an infinite number of, of stars, that's what the promise is to, to, to Abraham. I want you to think about it. It's so, it's so powerful. If you can number them, that's how your offspring shall be. Now, of course, the focus is upon the, 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 the numbering component. But in the background is, is the is the is the creation of these stars abraham knows that god created the stars yet god cannot give abraham a son right diva so there's doubt there there's doubt there uh i think this is the common problem with with humans because uh god is so big god is so great and we cannot grasp that bigness and it's almost impossible for us to grasp that bigness that we say that's impossible, that cannot happen. I think that's the common, that's a common phenomenon, whether it is based on unbelief or just uh, unrealistic belief, that is that is what is happening to human. That's yeah. it's up to us to where where is faith there and where is unbelief. Sometimes yeah. that's very difficult to decipher whether you are just uh, being awesome or there is unbelief i think that's the that's the bigger problem no that's really good Koya boy and and i i think it comes back we have that human nature we have in us we are offspring of adam and adam doubted adam doubted and so that is for us and you know we, we laugh and we're amazed at how abraham could not have believed when at the same time we, we, we're, we're living in a post-Christ, post-resurrection world. And it's like what Enting said. We still complain about when something doesn't go well. I'll be honest. I'll be transparent. You know, there was a problem tonight just before class. And I, my reaction was not in belief. It was in complaint. My, my reaction was in complaint, you know? And so, and so the second we start pointing fingers, you know, the first step to recovery is self-awareness. <laughs> The first, the first step to our to repentance is self awareness. So we we have to we we sh, we need to we need to resonate with Abraham and say we are here, we are here, and um, we are we are guilty. Um, and, but God is so gracious. Diva, he is he is so merciful to us. Uh, uh, yeah, sir. Uh, and this is also the reason why you know God did not. God cannot trust mere human beings. Yeah. And if you look at it in further narratives, when there is an agreement with 
suzerain and vassal, it was God Himself who passed through the yeah. cutted, you know, birds, carcass of the birds. Because yeah. it's not Abraham; it should be Abraham because he is a vessel, he is a servant. Yeah. It was God, and what does it tells me personally? Um, well, God cannot trust me as human being. Yeah, He is faithful to His promise. That's yeah. that's the main point. The main the main yeah. thing. No, that, that's really good, Sonny. And and later revelation will, will will reveal to us that it's actually God. Abraham has God's spirit working in him to bring about this. Noah has God's spirit in him. So it's 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 it is it's not. It's not God depending upon Noah. God is actually, we see this in, in Romans 12, 3. God, God not only calls, but he gives us the energy to do it. So Paul will say, you know, I worked harder than everyone else, but it was not me, but God's spirit working within me. It was the grace of God that was within me. So, so um, uh, yeah, we, should, we, we cannot come to this place and in any way, shape, or, 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 or sense say that, God was dependent upon Abraham in, in, a, in, a, in a full sense, in, a, in, in, a, in a, a, a possibility of failing sense, okay? Um, God was in complete control. And at the same time, Abraham, he had, he had to do it. And so God worked behind the scenes as well. Um, but this is where we come to. Look at this. Look at this. This is, this is the part. This is Abraham's part. Abraham's part is this right here. That's Abraham's part in the whole shebang. <laughs> in bringing the son, what is Abraham's part? His part is to believe the promise. His part is to believe. And look here. God counts belief as righteousness. So belief, belief, uh, righteousness is imputed, is imputed to Abraham when he believes, not when he does. Does everyone see that there? There's no doing. So, so a Jew would be, a Jew would be thinking, oh, once you obeyed God, once you obeyed God, then, then that's the righteousness. But there's no mention of doing. There isn't even the crediting of righteousness when, when, when Abraham goes right? It doesn't refer to once he goes that he is credited with righteousness. It's only after he believes the Lord or he believes in the word of God. Romans chapter four is the strongest passage paralleling this. And I would recommend if you want to look at what faith um, looks like a living faith romans chapter four i would put that as a cross reference that is so fundamental okay we're, 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 uh, it's, it's 8 40 now let's take a short break let, let me finish let me finish uh what's going on here let me finish this passage of scripture then we'll take a short break okay so i just there's more that's going to be said. I don't want to spend any more time except that what we see here is that um, we see here that there is also this, this, this is a time reference here. There's a time reference. And it's in a deep sleep. There's a reference to, 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 to time here. So I just want to emphasize here that this is typically when God will speak to the patriarchs. In this period, it's during the night. It's when they are, when they are um, um, communicating with God. I do want to say this as well, coming back up here, that there, there are two things. There are dreams and also visions. And these are different. A dream is when you're sleeping and you have this, you, you, God speaks and communicates. Whereas a vision is in the daytime, you can see, but you're not, your eyes and your ears are not really in, engaged. 
but you're seeing it in a very real sense. So, so some people will talk about, you know, I'll, I'll joke about this. So my, my pastor back in the U S he's more from a Pentecostal background. So we joke about having a vision. I'll say to him, I had a vision, but I'm joking. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that someone, if, if you have a thought, if God, the, the spirit can put a thought in our, in our minds, it, it can be, but that's not the sense in which the, 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 the scripture speaks about having a vision, having a thought, reading your Bible and having a thought. Um, for sure, the spirit's working in our life, but that's not the same as having a vision or a dream as being described in scripture. This is a, a, a real event where you're experiencing in a very real way um, a supernatural communication um, from God. And so, uh, you know, I do want us to be thinking about that because a lot of times we'll use language of I had a vision, I had a dream. And um, I do think we have to be incredibly careful because this is, my question would be, is it literal or are we speaking more figurative? And um, the moving of the spirit post scripture, post the closing of the canon is not the same as as this as this time period okay and, and and this and this comes back this comes back to this relationship and this discussion go ahead Koya Boy. great question Koya Boy. very good that's a really good question okay it's 8 57 wow we're, we're, let's 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 um ah man okay so what i'm going to do is i we're going to come back to these other passages next week let's just go through some of the powerpoint uh, significance is here and then we'll be done. So this word is used theophany in, in Voss. That thea or theos means God. Uh, uh, phane is, is like an appearance, appearing. So God appearing. So that's what the word means. That's a, that's a Christianese theological word. So we talked about this. We saw it in Genesis 12 compared to Genesis 15 before Abraham enters the promised land, he's speaking just like the first Genesis 1 to 11. And now that he is, enters the promised land, it's a special place of, of God's revelation. It, it, the mode and content advances. There's a lot more information being given. There's, there's different modes. There's different mediums now. There are now appearances. There is an increase in frequency of revelation. So Voss brings that out. Um, but at the same time, the revelations become much more restricted, guarded, and sacred and private. So uh, God, is, God is much more restrictive, and, and it's, it's, or we could say it's holy, it's set apart. We could say that as well. Some of the characteristics. So we saw some of these characteristics. There are some other characteristics. Those characteristics include... Um, location. So God is very specific where he's going to, to meet with, with his appointed vessels, with the patriarchs and others. It's more than the patriarchs. God, God appears to Abimelech in a dream. He's a, he's a pagan um, king, but he ap appears to him in a dream. He also, appear, the angel of the Lord appears to Hagar. There's, there's no evidence that Hagar was a believer. In fact, you know, she left. Although she was done wrong by um, Abraham and Sarah. I preached a sermon one time on, on Genesis 16. And one of the points I made was there's a whole lot of sinning going around. So Abraham was sinning, Sarah was sinning, sinning Hagar was sinning as well. There's just a whole lot of sinning going on in, in Genesis uh, 16. So, it, but, but the locations are, are seem to be limited and, and, and Voss brings out upon that. Then also the time is that he appears in the evening. He, he, off, he, he most often appears at night and in the evening. So this is just descriptions of, 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 of God's special revelation to us. And so think about this as well. Think about the limitations here and about how in, in many ways our, ours has changed. Is, is there only one location where we can meet with God? <laughs> Is there only one time when we're sleeping or when we're tired? Talking about mode. 
and so we talk about this is a, this is a this is a re, visions are it's real but they're not using the physical eye or the ear but it's a real it's it's a real event and then also there's this mediation now that that god is speaking god is speaking through his angel and so we'll discuss that next week the angel of the lord but what what i want us to see here is that i want us to think practically speaking we look at this and we say wow this is kind of strange this is this is the only time this is the only time that abraham isaac jacob joseph they would communicate with god right so th this really speaks to this really speaks to when we compare this in the history of revelation we compare this situation to ours we are so blessed and and to our shame we don't always take advantage of being able to speak to god whenever and we don't take advantage we don't recognize that god is dwelling within us and in, in, in his spirit next okay so we'll just we'll stop we'll stop with the angel of the lord tonight next week we'll finish the second half of of chapter number seven we'll discuss the angel of the lord okay so on, on this note let's close let's close in 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 prayer i hope this is making sense i do want to just summarize really quick so in the period between noah and the patriarchs we really see that god is going to save the nations through a family through through, through the shem family and, and the main point is really this idea of redemption. And then we see that God is revealing himself within the Shem family to Abraham, then to Isaac, and then to Jacob. And the mode of revelation is, becomes quite specific and it's very limited. So, so, so the Lord is only speaking, through the, speaking to the patriarchs. So think about if you were in the family, you would not have had direct communication with God. You would only have communication through your your father through the patriarch so and of all the and all the people in canaan all the family in shem only to our knowledge now there is other god fears we have melchizedek but for the most part god really limited limited himself to for his purposes to to a particular family and so we are so blessed we are so unbelievable unbelievably blessed in what we have now and we should never take that for granted and so i i hope that as we look at the history of revelation we look at all those things that went that god how patient he was to bring about our salvation and also how blessed we are to have god's spirit living within us being able to talk to god at any time and place having his revealed word and um may we not take that for light for, uh, for granted or, or, or take that lightly. Let's close in prayer. Can I have Pastor Henry, can you close us in?